Hello. In this video, we're going to learn how to install Windows 7 using Mac's Boot Camp. Before we begin, we need to have the following items. First, you'll need your Algonquin College network username. Next, you'll need a connection to the internet. You'll also need a Windows 7 installation disk. You'll need to have a super drive. This is Mac's optical disk drive that allows for both the reading and the writing to CDs and DVDs. You'll also need a blank CD or DVD. I estimate the time to complete this task at approximately two and a half hours. Of course, this depends on the performance of your MacBook Pro. So let's begin. We'll begin by launching Bootcamp, and I've given the path here. It's Applications, Utilities, Bootcamp Assistant. So let's go ahead and do that. I clicked Applications utilities and there's boot camp assistant and we can see that the icon for it is two stacked hard drives let's click it we're given an introduction it tells us that boot camp assistant is going to help with the installation of windows microsoft windows operating system on an intel based mac so our macbook pros are running intel based cpus there is an important note. Because Boot Camp Assistant is manipulating the hard drive, you should have a backup before we do this step. Also, you should make sure that you're uh, plugged in for power so that uh, your computer doesn't shut off because of a low battery. So we'll go ahead and click Continue. We see that there are three major steps to complete the installation of Windows 7. The first task is to create a Windows 7 installation disk. It's worth noting that if you're running a slightly older version of OS X, that's the operating system for Mac, you may not see this task here. What version of the operating system I'm running? If we go to the Apple system about this Mac, you can see that I'm running 10.8.1 which is the latest version of the OS X and its code name or its uh, public name if you will is Mountain Lion. The second task is to download the latest Windows support software from Apple. For this you'll need a blank CD or DVD and what this is telling us is Mac, uh, pardon me, Boot Camp Assistant will collect all of the device drivers uh, for the your MacBook Pro and it will perform them as a post installation on the Windows. The third and final step is to actually perform the installation of Windows 7. Well, I can ignore step number one, and the reason why I can ignore it is because I already have a Windows 7 installation disk. So I'll select that. At this point, you should insert a blank CD and or DVD and then you'll click continue. This second step takes approximately 30 to 30 minutes to approximately one hour. So I'm going to pause the video as my MacBook Pro collects the drivers and burns them to the, uh, the DVD. So I'm just going to pause it and I'll come back in a few minutes. Hello again. So I've now successfully completed uh, task number two, which was to download the latest Windows support software from Apple. And this second step has burned that software to my blank DVD. And I can show that to you here. I went to Finder and I'm looking at the DVD and you can see that a setup.exe, a setup executable file, was created for me on my DVD. And we'll see later that Windows 7 after its post installation will run this to install the appropriate drivers on Windows 7 so that we can get the correct video driver, the correct network adapter, etc. So at this point I'm going to eject uh, Boot Camp. So the DVD was ejected from the super drive. I'm going now to perform the third step, which is install Windows 7. I'll click Continue. Bootcamp Assistant is showing us the um, image of the hard disk. It's showing us 
how much space is set aside for OS X and how much space it's thinking for Windows, uh, in this case Windows 7. We can see that I have a 729 gigabyte uh, hard drive on the OS X side and he wants to have 20 gigs for Windows. That's not enough for Windows, especially given that we want to have lots of software installed on both sides. So our recommendation is to divide that equally. So I'm going to go to the slideshow and where that's where we're at. At this point, um, my super drive is empty. You'll take your Windows 7 disk, installation disk, and insert that into the super drive. Once you've done that, you'll click install. Once again, I'm going to pause the video while I do that. Hello again. So where we left off was I inserted the Windows 7 installation disk into the super drive and I clicked install from the boot camp assistant. Unfortunately, I can't take a screen capture or screencast of the actual installation of Windows for the very reason that I don't have the software. I'm using Camtasia to record this screen video. It can't be running during the installation of Windows. So what I've done, I've done my best to try to capture as a narrative the various wordings that are going to appear on each of the screens during the Windows installation. The first one will prompt you to enter your language. Uh, for myself, I accepted the default setting, which is American, United States. I click Next. There will be an Install Now. You'll be presented with the licensing terms. You'll accept that. Click Next. And this step here, this is important. We need to format the partition where Windows is going to reside. To do that, we'll go click Custom Advanced. And this is vitally important. The screen will show you all of the partitions that are currently known on the hard disk. You'll make sure to select the one that's labeled Boot Camp. And you'll see a item, a link, uh, Drive Options Advanced. You'll click that link, make sure that Boot Camp partition is selected, and click Format. Please note, as a warning, if you've selected another partition and then you click format, you've overridden uh, OS X and the chances are very good that you've uh, done uh, irre irreversible damage to the, uh, to the installation of the operating system. When you do click format, you'll get a warning and that's basically what I said. If you click the wrong one, please note that you are formatting the disk and you uh, have to take care at what you're doing. You'll click Next and then you wait some cycles while Windows is installing to the hard drive. It is normal behavior for the computer to reboot during this process. Once the partitioning and the installation of Windows is done and after reboot it will perform the setup. Windows is going to prompt you for a username I ask that you use your Algonquin Network uh, username for that. You'll enter a password. Uh, I clicked Use Recommended Settings, and then I changed the time zone to be Eastern Time. We li live in the Eastern Time Zone. You'll click Next. When the desktop appears, at this point, you'll uh, notice that um, you most likely do not have a nice configuration. Perhaps the desktop is too big in terms of resolution. The chances are very good that you cannot access the internet. And the reason why is because we do not have the device drivers to run all the peripherals and devices for the MacBook Pro. So what we need to do is eject the Windows 7 installation disk, insert the boot camp disk, that was step number two in the Boot Camp Assistant steps. And you'll run setup.exe. And that will take about 10, 15 minutes or so. And what the uh, Boot Camp disk will do is, as said, install all of the appropriate devices and their drivers. So after this step completes the Boot Camp uh, setup, you should have access to the internet. 
Uh, depending on what graphics driver you have, your desktop should look uh, hopefully better. And you'll have, for example, if you have FaceTime, uh, you should have the ability to use that. So congratulations at that step. You should have successfully completed and set up uh, Windows 7. So there are some other items to go over. How do you select which operating system to boot? I've given a prescription here. I've given some steps here. Please note there are other ways. You'll learn them as you go. But assume that we're powering on our MacBook Pro or we're rebooting it for some reason. During the reboot or power on cycle sequence, you'll hold down the option key. And in my keyboard, it's the option key and alt appears in the upper left hand corner of the key. You'll press that key down and hold it. And then a menu will appear and it will show all of the operating systems that are on the hard disk. In mine, it shows three OS X, Windows 7, and the recovery for OS X. Then you'll press the return key uh, after you've made your selection and it will boot into that operating system. My last slide. What if you need to destroy Windows, you need to remove it. You'll boot into the Mac and you'll start Boot Camp Assistant. Remember again, that's Applications, Utilities, Boot Camp Assistant. And when the wizard comes up now, you'll notice that the third step has now changed to be Remove Windows 7. Please note that you are destroying Windows 7, the Windows 7 partition. So any applications you have on Windows, any files that you have on Windows, they will be lost, they will be gone. So either have them backed up to the cloud or backed up to a CD or a DVD or perhaps a USB jump drive, something like that. So to remove seven, Windows 7, you'll uh, select Remove Windows 7, click Continue. There will be a warning, I just uh, stated the warning. You'll click Restore, and what's going to happen is the Windows 7 partition will be uh, scrubbed, it will be white, and then that disk space will be given back to OS X. You'll wait a few minutes during this restoration process, and once complete, you'll just click Quit to exit Boot Camp. With that, that concludes this video on how to install Windows 7. I do realize that I've... Um, done some time lapses here. As said, it takes approximately two, two and a half hours. Uh, your mileage is going to vary depending on your book, uh, on your uh, specs for your MacBook Pro. If there's some um, steps that you need to go over, please, this is an important skill that I want you to do. Please reach out to me, either contact me by email or get a hold of me, and I'd be more than happy to sit down with you and we can go over it. Thank you.